welcome back everybody. Today we're gonna go back in on the table here and we're gonna finish up this strips of colonials. And if you guys recall in the last paint and chat, I had discovered some areas on these packs that I need some more black, the uh, ammo boxes. And I think we were going to go back and do the canteens and uh, base metal. And then after the black touch-ups are done, including some of the boots, I need to get nail some of the boots. So we'll start off with some black today. <coughs> and um, I think these guys are fine. My ragtag brigade. So I'm going to put them towards the back here. It's the guys with the bayonets drawn we're going to focus on with the black with the cleanup for black. What I'll call cleanup. <clears throat> so we'll do that and then we're going to ready to go in with the flush. Uh, I like to use a buff because again I like to do a medium brown wash or even a light brown wash. And once you do this buff and the wash, it's the perfect skin tone. Um, and again, we're going for um, tabletop quality here. Uh, we're not looking at super, super uh, massive detail, uh, needless to say, but we still want them to look nice, right? So, stir up our paint, reorganize our paint desk here. Got a new mat. I really love these blue, <coughs> everything in the new paint area, paint and build area. Over here in my niche, you can see here in the background, these I've got some shelving kits over there right now. And um, <clears throat> that's where the, the magic will happen. Because I'm getting more lumber delivered. And uh, I'll be framing over here soon. So <clears throat> when you have a nail gun, things go fairly quick. All right. I get our black lead out here. I'm going to check out the consistency. Shouldn't need a whole lot. And um, I'm probably going to go one dropper. One dropper. One drop. Get my stir stick here. Work that in. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the jury is still out if I'm going to just use my existing tables and put them over there, or I will go to Ikea and have a, a system built, take all the measurements and have a system built. I haven't fully decided. I hate to part with these. Uh, they're, they're so nice. Um, but I'm still going to go with this depth. I need this nice depth to stack things up and... Uh, so I'll still make use of these uh, this nice mat. Uh, another Amazon purchase, of course. And um, let's go ahead and get these leaders put to the side here. And uh, trying to get this stuff banged out here over the next week, uh, so I can get everything shifted. All right, so I think we're ready to go. We're gonna whip out the. Uh, we're probably gonna stick with the regiment brush. Gamer Regiment. And um, uh, let's get started. Um, go in on the shot. As you can see a little better. I don't want to go in too deep. And um, so, yeah, let's go in and hit these boots, tops of the boots. Because once we base these, you won't really see a lot of this, but occasionally they'll peek through the basing material, the grass, the flock, and uh, we will want to see that. Turn out some different camera angles here. Everything's going to be working good. But when we move to the new area over there across the studio, <clears throat> that all have to get reconfigured for the most part, except for the top-down camera. I think we've pretty well got that 
we pretty well got that nailed. So going in with the tops of the boots. One, two, three. And we'll go to the side here just a little bit. Come back on the shot. And we'll be able to hit the tops of the boots this way. Hope everybody had a great Christmas and a happy new year. Lots of things happening. Been doing a lot of planning for uh, our season two for my other channel, Exploring with the Smiths. Um, we are going to be doing some more bike ride planning. I'm going to start doing some planning videos showing uh, everyone how I plan for trips. And um, you know, still working on a preliminary list of uh, places we're going to go and see this upcoming season. Now we will be doing some museum tours this winter. Uh, Cl uh, Cleveland Museum of Art is on the list. Um, the Ohio History Connection here in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we haven't been there for a while so we wanted to fit that in on some day uh, when I'm not working on something. I'm going to take a break. Now here I'm going to go in with the ammo packs. A little spot on his hat touch up there. And come in. And then I've got to come back when I do the canteen. There's a little, like a crest area, raised crest area on the ammo pack. that I will touch with some uh, base metal. This is a great time too guys as as I'm coming over these I am seeing if there's anything else black that needs to be hit. And in this case the hats. Right. Yeah so my son works and li lives and works in downtown Cleveland now since he's graduated he got a really good job very proud of him but um, so we'll be doing a lot more in Cleveland <clears throat> I gotta tell you I'm really impressed I didn't was I didn't really spend a lot of time up in Cleveland over the years and um, I gotta say it's blown me away there's a lot to do up there um, the downtown area is very nice. It's all upscaled now. Um, he lives in a loft apartment, so he's, it's a he was an old uh, textile mill. Uh, it was built, I think, in like 1905 or something. And they're doing a lot of that up there, where they're going into these. The, it's called the warehouse district. It's down by where the old. Uh, uh, docks where, where you know ships would come in with the raw materials and also for shipping things out I think this is going to be good at this angle uh, getting that so that strip is done and uh, they're taking these old uh, warehouses old uh, textile mills um, and they are turning them into apartments all right, so here's some of the experimentation I've been doing, guys. You can see I came in with, uh, just to play around a little bit, I did, came in and did a little bit of um, a gray wash. I'm just playing with the shading. Uh, <clears throat> you can see I did some of that with my Calvary. I did my standard white wash or white base coat. And I've come in with a light gray wash and then I'm going to go in with my, my blue tunics, my blacks, all the, my usual colors. I'll pick the colors for the horses. 
<clears throat> and just uh, playing with some of the shading and undertones, kind of like a little experiment I've wanted to work with. The other advantage with doing a wash like that after my base coat is it's helping me bring out some of the uh, details on the models. So, uh, helping me pick out the details. And we can always come back in and with some white at the very end when we're doing our, our highlighting phase and just pick some of the, the top straps out with just a touch of white <clears throat> to give it a little contrast. But uh, been able to get some painting done. I've done more work on the layout. You may be able to see in the background shot. Um, finished uh, several more buildings, cottages, uh, experimenting with trees. I'm still almost there with the trees. I did like tree stands like I would do for my wargaming, but I didn't like how they look on the layout. <clears throat> so I'm gonna put those in the in the scenery bin and I'm just gonna free uh, stand trees. I'm not gonna build groups of stands of trees. I'm gonna individually plant them so to speak throughout the layout. And I also figured out a way through some of the trees that I ordered uh, on eBay uh, using a very light gauge wire and some uh, flocking materials, I'm going to be able to make my own trees. Beech trees, birch trees, what have you. And uh, I'll be able to do make those myself. And uh, when I get to that point, um, I'll bring you guys along and show you what I'm doing. It's just a different scale, you know, and scales are really small. Some somebody commented on one of my videos that, excuse me, that in scale was 10 millimeter. I think it's smaller than that, honestly. It's pretty small. It's substantially smaller than 15 millimeter. But the point I was wanting to make on that one video was it's similar to N-Scale, not that it's the same scale. <laughs> it's N-Scale trains are nice because they're smaller. And if you have limited space, like what I'm trying to do, I just want to fill this area up with a new layout, something that's a little bit more, a lot more elaborate. Um, I've always wanted to build a town or two um, so we'll have some industry on the layout. I want to run a lot of steam locomotives on this new layout. So I'm going to try to pick an era like you know, some like early 1900s probably is kind of what I'm thinking right now. And then um, it'll be a nice little project to bring you guys along on. It's going to take some time. Everything worth doing, it takes time. <clears throat> so yeah, we're finding a lot of places up around Cleveland, Ohio that we want to go see. They have several museums. They have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum, although even though I'm a rock and roll fan, I don't... <clears throat> it doesn't super appeal to me. I posted on my Facebook earlier that uh, I discovered there's a World War II submarine on display. A World War II submarine that, if they wanted to, could uh, unhook from the dock and take it out and submerge it. It is still is at full operational condition. I thought that was pretty amazing. They're in the process, they're working on, uh, they're rebuilding the engine right now, the diesel engine that was a GM uh, engine made in Cleveland. Uh, they found a couple donor motors where they could get, uh, get some parts off of, and they're in the process of rebuilding that diesel engine. So I definitely want to check that out. There's a steamship you can tour up there that I want to check out because I love mechanical things. <clears throat> Obviously I love history things, things to do with history. And uh, we'll be putting all that content up on my 
my other channel. Alright, so these packs are just about done. I decided that the haversacks were really like a <clears throat> like a canvas when I researched it. So I'm just gonna leave those white because once we do the wash, those will look just like canvas. Dirty canvas. Right? All right, so let's let those dry, and then I will come back. And we'll start on the flesh. Okay, going in with the buff. And I know when I get to this phase, the flesh. Um, I'm getting close to being done, and we're getting we're getting ready to base. We're getting ready to base these up. One drop of water. Going with the stir. Seems to be good. I want it to be too runny with these, you know, going on the faces and the hands. You don't want it to run around too much, so to speak. I'm gonna go in with my uh, insane detail. Okay. And load up the brush. You new guys don't go, don't go crazy. Right? Don't go up to the metal. All right. <clears throat> and let's go in and. I'm kind of just going from one side of the face right now. Like you said, you don't want it too thick because the, if the paint's too thick, you won't see the details of the face. Right? Kind of the consistency of thick cream. Right? You just have to... <clears throat> You just have to toy with it if you're new new to this. You know, it's not the end of the world if you get your paint a little too thick or too thin. I just use these. I just pan around to another one and I'll mix up another batch. And I said it's not the end of the world. This paint's relatively cheap. It's five six bucks on Amazon and it lasts. It goes a long way, especially with a 15 millimeter. With these mass infantry battles, <coughs> excuse me, it's hard to go wrong with this 15 mil scale. I tell you, the cost is, is less. The painting is, I think, easier. All right, I'm going to go right back, right up the line, getting their hands. And bada bink, bada boom. flip them around and we will do the other side of the face oops there's a faux pas just get that off of there Got a little bit on the bayonet you can see that I'll come in on the shot just a little bit more for you guys for you new painters you want to see more of the detail see them um, boom boom the thumb and the outer hand assembly line painting just got to be careful going around that bayonet I <clears throat> give myself a bunch of extra touch-ups Camera angle seemed to be better. Getting it dialed in. It'll be really similar once we get over to the niche. The niche. The, the camera setup is going to be very similar. So. Oh. 
I'm gonna <clears throat> turn, I'm gonna find a, the right angle to use here. Seems to be like this, and I'll just twist and turn them as I need to to get this other side of the face. Boom, boom. You see kind of what I'm doing here. And it's kind of going, adjusting my angle a little bit. Again, yeah, my entire arm <clears throat> is resting on this table. All right, it gives me a lot of stability and control. Like I said, don't go too nuts getting down along the neckline. That's going to be hidden with wash, and honestly, most people are not going to ever see it. Got a little bit on the hat there. Let's get it off there with my finger. Mink. Mink. <clears throat> it's all about twisting and turning. That's why I like those Gatorade caps. It really gives you a firm grip on the miniature so you can get the in on the angles that you want. And by doing these angles, guys, this is not kind of twisting and turning. <clears throat> That's really what makes it uh, go a lot easier. Now here again, we're gonna get the underside of the hand. You can see there. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna just twist them upside down. I'm going to come and get that hand that's on the other side of the musket. And at this angle, it gets me right in there. Boom, boom, just like surgery. Mm -hmm. Once I get them base, guys, I'll go in and I'll straighten the muskets and all that nonsense. I'm not too concerned about that, and then as you play with them and stuff, they'll get a little bent. <clears throat> That's the only downside to pewter. When you have these long bayonets like this, um, and again, that's another selling point to doing multi-basing, because you're really moving a block of troops, and you're really not, it's not necessary to touch the miniatures, right? It's just not necessary. But I'll tell you, I've learned so much about the American War of Independence that I thought I knew a lot, which I found out that I really didn't know that much. Right. These guys over here by the command group, so we got the flag bearers, I have my commander, my lieutenant, and my uh, drummer boy. Right. He's all ready to go. So, let's do another strip here for you. Same technique. One side of the face, one side of the face. One side of the face. Feel free to ask me any questions, guys. people <clears throat> message me, PM me, and say to bring back the paint chats because they like to paint their minis while they have my video on, which is really cool. Um, other question I get from time to time is how long does it take? Well, <laughs> you can't answer that question. You know, I guess if I sat in one day, if I really, really wanted to, <laughs> I could finish several regiments of miniatures, I guess. It's like a lot of things, like just like with work, you know, you've got to find balance, or otherwise you get burned out, right? I have other modeling hobbies that I do. I build model kits from time to time. I, I like to make dioramas. <coughs> And um, just making sure my audio is on. <laughs> Boy, that always sucks if you shoot a segment and you find out, hey, I forgot to turn the microphone on. <laughs> that always sucks. 
but uh, yeah I mean there is no right answer on how long it takes I mean I just don't I, I really don't like to start stuff until I finish another project that's kind of a rule that I stick to like Star Wars Legion I'm really wanting to buy some of those kits as I love stormtroopers and I'm really looking forward to building some an imp a good Empire army but uh, I gotta get these done first I do have some 28 mils on my desk but a lot of those I have gotten for free for with my War Games Illustrated so I went ahead and built them and primed them um, so they wouldn't get lost in the shuffle when when we start getting down to the nitty gritty and I really start doing a lot more uh, finishing of the basement. Um, I would have a bunch of loose miniatures all over the place. These all go into the cabinet, my miniatures cabinet, and uh, everything will be dust free. And <clears throat> we start refinishing the drywall and are doing the drywall seams. There's going to be some sanding involved. They'll they'll still relatively without getting drywall dust all over them, all right? So then we'll switch them around. I'm going to go about this angle, all right? I'm going to come in to the other side of the face. So if you're retired or you're a student and you have a lot of spare time um, and you're working on stuff steadily every day, I mean, we're talking, you know, you could probably build this 15 millimeter colonial army, build it. We're talking cleaning the mold lines, um, base coating. Uh, I use my airbrush for base coating and top coating the finished product. You know, two, a couple weeks probably, you know. This is not a rush hobby. I wouldn't. If you're like the type of person that likes to rush things, this isn't going to be a hobby you'll <coughs> enjoy until you learn to slow down, you know, settle down, <coughs> and just enjoy yourself and uh, think about the finished product as more so than um, how fast you can get done. So I saw this technique being utilized I said that's that's really ingenious using the popsicle sticks like this Let's see if I can go with another angle to get to that hand I guess it's not going to be a huge deal because I'm finding it hard to get get to a spot. <clears throat> You're probably not going to see it on the tabletop, especially after a wash. But I'm just getting all the ancillary details here that I know may be able to be seen later on. All right, so boom, boom, boom. Three strips. What is that? Ten minutes? <coughs> Fifteen minutes, maybe? All right, I'm going to go ahead... I'm gonna finish these up. So after a couple stands, I'll always clean my brush because it'll start to get like a crust right below where you're dipping. And I'll go back in. I may put another drop of water in my pot here. Make sure I've got all the paint off. I sharpen the tip again. And then um, next video, we'll be doing the um, the base gun metal, which we'll use on the canteens, we'll use on the outside of the uh, ammo pack, and then they'll be ready for washing. We'll do a wash, and then they'll be ready for basing. 
I'll probably come back in after the wash, after they're completely dry. Really inspect them and say, hey, should I get in here with a little white and hit the tops of the straps or the sun hits? Just do a little highlighting maybe. This depends sometimes the way they come out <clears throat> with my base colors that I'm using, with my light uh, brown wash that I'm using. Um, a lot of times they come out just perfect. I don't have to do any touch-ups. They're just totally good tabletop standard. And then we're ready to start jumping into the basing. <clears throat> and I'll bring you along for that final stage. And also the, uh, the absolute final stage is my uh, top coat, protective coat, um, with my airbrush. And that locks everything in, helps protect the miniature, helps protect the paint. And, um, and then it'll be basing time. All right. So, uh, yeah. So see you next time. Everybody be good. Have a great new year. And remember, and whatever you do, keep moving forward. Ciao.